Okay. We're now looking at the famous Daniel 9. And it's basically due to the wording in this passage that I was um, caused to understand uh, the Bible Hebrew meter thing. Because the math in this passage, the way people both pro and con pre-trib rapture, um, all the explanations on both sides of that question, everybody, including my own pastor, screwed up the math. Okay? In other words, the pre-trib people and the no-trib people or the mid-trib people or the post-trib people, all of them on both sides of the question can't add and subtract. Which means everybody has been having a brain fart over this passage for two thousand years. Now how can that be? How can a brain out be right and all these other people be wrong? That's what bothered me about it. Okay? I mean, because I think I'm scum of the earth. I really do. And so this was back in, I want to say, the year 2004. Like a lot of other people who are pre-trib trained, and I was one of them, you know, this is, you know, the flagship passage proving that, what? Hello, right here. Seven years are still owed to the Jews. Now you can be as dumb as, what do you want to call it? You can be dumber than somebody with a IQ of room temperature on a cold Chicago day. And you can still know that, excuse me, wait a minute, there's seven years here that are owed to the Jews because this was written to a Jew about the Jews. There's a there's seven years. See, one week is seven years, you know, in this translation. It's literally heptad. Okay, using the 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 Greek. But you know, it's the same thing in the Hebrew. Sheba means seven. And it stands for the promise of God. That's why a week is divided into seven days. The promise comes at the end of the week. Every Jew knows that, and most Christians too. We fight over what the seventh day is, but we know that the week has seven days. We all live on that, even if we don't believe in God at all. Okay, well see, there's this, this week of years that's all to the Jews. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it hasn't. So, hello, if there's a week owed to the Jews and you're not, your church, then that week has to play out after church, which can only mean, hello, pre-trib rapture. Period. Over. Out. No mid-trib, no post-trib, no nothing. One week, he, the guy who comes to make a covenant with the Jews for a week. But in the middle of the week, he puts a stop to what? The sacrifice and offering, which means there's a temple at that time. Remember what we just saw in Revelation 11? There's a temple that's going to be up that ain't up now. That in the middle of the tribulation goes down 1260 days to be precise. Oh, see, that's Daniel 9.27 being talked about in Revelation 11. Preceded by Revelation 9, which is the beginning of the third year when the demons come out. Although we've not seen any demons, 200 million strong, coming out of some bottomless pit with a lot of smoke. Tormenting people for five months, so I guess they have to have a month to sort of organize themselves. And at the end, at 3.6, they come and destroy the two human witnesses that are standing there in front of the temple that doesn't exist yet. They destroy them at that point. 
And the whole world watches. Well, the whole world couldn't watch in 70 AD. They didn't have television then. And since the days we've had television, it ain't happened yet. Or we'd all know about it. Of course, we'd all be dead now. Or in the millennium and seeing Christ here on earth. Oh, one week. One week. Uh, and in the middle of the week, that thing happens. Duh. Okay? Duh. So if you're a preterist, you can't read Bible. You need 1 John 1 9 desperately, and you need to talk to God because these passages prove you can't read Bible. And if you're mid trib or post trib or some other kind of ding dong, you can't read Bible either because see that blue text right there in the middle? Proves you can't read Bible. Now, how incompetent are they? Let me show you. Okay? Oh, I might not be able to do this with the recording on. Let's see if I can. I can't. Okay. I have to do that in the next increment to show you how dumb these people are. So, what I was going to do is I was going to take you to Exodus 12, which shows that God's accounting is a, is a calendar solar year, never a lunar year. So, all the Jews and all the Christians are completely having brain farts when they try to account time in the Bible as lunar years. Now, a whole lot of Jews know that that's wrong. Okay? A whole lot of Jews who are Messianics, in fact, know that that's wrong. But the Christians haven't known that's wrong. They're still doing lunar years. Even the dispensationalists are counting in lunar years. Even my pastor was doing that 30 years, you know, 30 years before he died. And I, I wish I could find a place where he learned to do it right, but I can't. Not yet. But he sure knows it now. He's dead now. Okay, look. 70 weeks. That means 490 years. Everybody knows that. And they play around with wallets. See, how do we back into it? And what does it mean 62 weeks? This is karat. To be cut off and accomplish nothing. It's not have nothing. It means accomplish nothing. Okay. And everybody, including the predators, one thing everybody agrees on is that, is that this is when he died. That the 62 weeks ends when he died. They just have a lot of trouble massaging the math to figure out what's the length of time between that and that. And the reason why they can't get it right is because they're using lunar years for one thing. And they don't know, they didn't go all the way back to Genesis 5 and do God's accounting for the dates in the Bible. Which I had to do because when I came across this thing and I'm trying to understand what my pastor said his math wasn't working and neither was anybody else on either side of the rapture fans so I had to go all the way back to Genesis 5 and do the counting myself and that's what most of my videos are about the you know mirroring.htm and genius.xls all that stuff's going to be in the video description so you can look at it yourself and see if I screwed up somewhere because it really bothers me that I got it right and they got it wrong. I don't like saying somebody's wrong. It makes me feel sick. Okay, but if it's going against the Bible, then I got to explain it. I got to go, I got to call whoever's on the carpet about it. If you're going to say the Bible's wrong when, when it's really the fact that you haven't done your homework, then I can't be silent. Whether you agree with me or not, I don't care. I have to say my thing and then just get off the stage. That's what I'm doing now. 70 weeks, 490 years, okay, to this. Okay, there aren't 490 years between the time that this prophecy starts and Messiah is cut off. It's longer. It's 616 years. But if you don't know how to read the Bible, you will just... 490 years have to be from here to here. And then is it 490 lunar years or 490 solar years? And basically what happened was the scholars gave up. And they just count backwards from what they think the date of the cross was. 
and then the ending point at 490 years prior is when they say the prophecy starts and so they end up thinking that this decree here refers to a human king and the nearest guy is the king the the Persian king that Nehemiah was under and they say well that Persian king made a decree yeah well it's not anywhere in the Bible that the Persian king did that Nehemiah visited Jerusalem to fix just her walls. The city was well rebuilt already, thank you very much. But her walls were down, and he was only there for 52 days. That's in the book of Nehemiah. So everybody who's pro-trib pre-trib rapture, and they're right to be pre-trib rapture, but their math is completely wrong here. So the preterist looks at the math of the pre-trib rapture people, laughs at them, and says, well, we see preterism is right. Those pre-trib people can't add and subtract. No, you guys can't add and subtract either, preterists. Because you didn't go back to where you need to go back to understand what this is in the first place. That's an accounting of time that begins in Genesis 5. It's very deliberate and it's very obvious if you run the math of the Bible instead of looking at the stupid stars or some doctor so-and-so with his screwball accounting like Eusebius who just slapped 490 years onto you know Daniel 9 to try and decide when David was here there and say that that Israel missed 70 sabbatical years no she didn't so you see everybody's having a brain fart here because they get this math wrong they can't tell that this thing that God says, which is, by the way, metered to the 490 years, it's in a 490-year meter. Just like Isaiah 53, Psalm 90, and later Ephesians 1, 3 through 14, and before that, the Magnificat. They're all in 490-year meter. It's based on a 490-year meter. Whoa. See, if you didn't count your syllables, which even a brain out can do, you don't know how important this highlighted blue subject is, and you don't know how to do the math of it. So, on the one hand, you can say, well, dang, brain out, that's a pretty sophisticated explanation. It's understandable why so many people would not understand it. Yeah, it is, but there's no excuse for this. He will make a covenant for one week and in the middle of the week. That ain't never happened yet, honey. And it's to the Jews for a temple that's standing. There ain't no temple standing yet. We saw in Revelation 11 that there's a temple standing. So when John is writing, he's writing after the temple, temple has been destroyed, which every preterist is very happy to say. Okay, then how come they don't recognize it's rebuilt then? There ain't no temple here. I mean, there's a temple in the until 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 the middle of the week. And then it comes. Okay? Until what is decreed is poured out on what? The one who makes desolate. Now if church get this. Here's the culminating explanation. If church replaced Israel and the temple went down and it ain't going to be rebuilt because church now inherits all the promises of Israel then the one who made desolate is church then church is condemned so very clearly this cannot be referring to church replacing Israel it can't mean that and of course, the more obvious point is that, hello, what about all those promises in Genesis 12 and 15 and 19? And what about Ezekiel 39 and 40 where the temple's rebuilt, Christ is ruling on earth, and Israel's queen of the nations? What about all that? Well, church doesn't inherit that. They're the Jews. Revelation 7. Revelation 12. Revelation 13. Revelation 11. None of that's happened yet. And it sure can't be church because then that would mean church is the one who makes desolate. I don't think that the body of Christ is making desolate, do you? So this one week in the middle of the week hadn't happened yet. 
And even if you don't understand all the sophisticated math in here, you can read this. Oh, somebody, got to be somebody in the future. This hasn't happened now. It didn't happen in 70 AD. Titus didn't make a covenant with the Jerusalem, and neither did Rome for just seven years. That three and a half years into it suddenly breaks and stops the sacrifices and offering. None of that's happened yet. You know, and I can go on with about, you know, 900 other prophecies in the Bible that haven't happened yet. But see, you, it's a complete no-brainer right here. So if you read that passage and you think that trib is mid, that, that the rapture is mid-trib or post-trib, or that it doesn't happen, that you're preterist, even partial, then you can't read Bible and something's mentally wrong with you. You are so far retarded in the spiritual life that you desperately need help from God and what I suggest is you use 1 John 1 9 and you go to God and say look I want to prove this brain out wrong I would love it if you did or just say what the heck is this brain out talking about or if you just say to God what's the truth about this thing and keep using 1 John 1 9 he'll show it to you peace out